It's clear that this collusion between big tech and the government, despite the amazing work being done by the Missouri Attorney General to put a wall of separation between them, didn't just start and end with Russiagate, the 2020 election with COVID. But now the stakes are ever higher, as the pro-Iran contingent of the federal government might just walk us into another major war. They leave the Palestinian flag draped over our French allies in the Revolutionary War. They replace old glory with the pride flag. Now Hamas leaders are meeting with Iran's Khamenei, the Ayatollah, in Tehran. Will we, be, will we be allowed to speak openly about these dangerous developments without being labeled as mis or disinformation? Joining us now to discuss all of this and more is author and columnist Lee Smith. Lee, thanks for being here tonight. Thank you, Kara, for inviting me on. Nice to see you. You as well. So do the stakes just keep getting higher when it comes to government censorship and how they shape the flow of information? Um, well, I mean, certainly going into 2024, we're going to see uh, we're going to see everything as bad as we've seen in 2020 and 2022 and 2016. I, 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 I want to point out that, you know, you, you, you said in your opening that are they leading us into war? And I want to tell your audience it, it's considerably worse than that. No, they're, they're not leading us into war, because when you look at what's happening, what's really happening is that the Biden administration, like the Obama administration before it, has partnered with the Iranians, right? You look at what Biden is doing. Biden wants a ceasefire. Biden wants it over. The administration, first Obama and now Biden, has turned against traditional American allies. What this means is the different things that we're seeing on the street in Washington, the different things that we're seeing uh, on social media, the different things that we're seeing on big tech, the government of the United States and the federal bureaucracies have turned against the citizens of the United States. It's, it's, it, there, there is going to be no war against Iran, never mind against China, to defend the interests of Americans. The Biden administration has partnered with Iran. The Biden administration has partnered with China. That's why we're seeing all these different third world manifestations on the streets of Washington, D.C. That's why we're seeing third world manifestations on our social media and with big tech. And that's it right there. The Democratic Party is third world. That's who they're partnering with. So it's much worse than the idea of a shooting war with Iran because the real war is against the United States of America. No, and that's definitely true. One thing I would fear, though, what I was saying with leading into war is that by appeasing Iran, allowing Iran to strengthen to, oh. and to bolster itself, yeah. that then it's going to, you know, it, all the Biden and all the Democrats, they can say, but wait, Iran, we were your friend. We helped you. Robert Mallory right. and the well, rest. Exactly. I, it's going to come back to bite them. Yeah, there's a very good point on that. You'll hear a lot of right wing influencers right now talk about Armageddon and Biden and Armageddon and Biden and Netanyahu, Armageddon, Armageddon, World War Three. The really dangerous thing, the factor most likely to lead to Armageddon is giving the Islamic Republic of Iran uh, a, a nuclear bomb. And that's the way the Biden administration and the Obama administration is pushing it. So that's the really dangerous thing. So that that I entirely agree with. We're creating a very, very, we're, 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 we're feeding, we're arming, and we're funding a very dangerous animal here with the Islamic Republic. That we do because a lot of the ideologues in D.C. still see them as the underdogs that we need to be helping, you know, right? Iran and the rest of the, uh, those, you know, in their sphere of influence, Hezbollah, uh, Hamas and all the rest. They'll try and paint them as the as the freedom fighters, right, as the underdogs fighting upward. And so those naive uh, ideologues, the rest, I mean, I, I, I see it much darker than that. I, I think it's not just looking at the underdogs. I think we're, I, you know, as I, as, I, as I think I've spoken about with you before, I, we're being led by a pathological regime. And, you know, historically, the United States, we talk about in terms of foreign policy, we talk about, you know, sharing values. And that's why Obama turned toward the Islamic Republic. The Islamic Republic shares uh, the, the Obama uh, faction shares values with the Islamic Republic of Iran. And if you look at everything that's happened um, since the Iran nuclear deal, if you look at Russiagate, all these different things, we're living in a third world environment. I don't think the United States is a banana republic which you hear a lot of people saying. But the people who are right now ruling this country, the people who are sitting on top, those are 100% third, uh, third worldist. And do you think that perhaps a visible manifestation of that is Lafayette Square? They left it covered in the Palestinian flags. 